welcome to another live review. A bit different from normal, as normally you'd see Pierce next to me. Uh, <laughs> next to me. But this time round, it's me mom. Hello! <laughs> uh, so yeah, this... Well, it was yesterday, because we were too knackered to do the recording last night. I mean, didn't get home until... What was one. it? About one o'clock, something yeah. like that. Near enough. Yeah. And whilst Pierce and I have the energy for that some of the time... I'm an old lady. <laughs> <laughs> you're not that old. <laughs> I mean, you're younger than who we went to see. True. <laughs> so yeah, we went to see Alice Cooper at Wembley Arena. Um, this is the first time you've seen him since... The um, Welcome to My Nightmare tour back in 70-something. <laughs> I think I want to say probably 74, something like that. Yeah, 73, 74, I think. <laughs> it's a long time ago anyway. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the first time I've seen him since 2012, but that was headlining a festival, so a bit of a different dynamic to it being his show specifically. Very different. I mean, festivals are whole different animals anyway. Yeah, I mean, to be fair, it was an open air festival, so there's a lot more that you can do open air that you can't really do when it's a arena. Like, I wasn't surprised he didn't do the whole coming out on a huge tower. <laughs> or a fire curtain. <laughs> yeah. Um, Although the fire curtain could have been done, but I can't imagine the tower would be that no. feasible. <laughs> would have been nice to have the fire curtain. It was freezing in there. <laughs> well, that wouldn't really affect us. No. <laughs> you never know. Um, but anyway, uh, there were a couple of supports. Uh, the Tubes, was it? And The Mission. Uh, Varying opinions on those two. Um, not much to really say on the tubes because uh, we both kind of got a bit bored with them. I think they sh did their set wrong. They should have had their songs in different orders because just as you got into a piece, um, they changed their tone again, and it was it was all a bit stilted. Mm. Yeah, I mean. It's not like the music they played, which was sort of funk, soul, rock. I don't know what it was. I don't think they actually knew quite where they were going. Yeah. It was a, it was various genres. I mean, the music itself wasn't objectionable, but they... Well, for me, they felt very mechanical. Um, uh, I was saying last night that uh, when they do solos and things like that, it didn't feel like a natural solo, it felt like a spot. This is the time that so-and-so plays the guitar, and in about five minutes, someone will play the drums. Yeah. It's not like with The Mission and Alice Cooper's band, where when the solos happened, it was sort of like, oh, now there's a solo. Yeah, well, it was seamless. Yeah. That's the pure and simple fact of it. Yeah, it's not like you could actually go, oh, this is when the solo is going to happen. Uh, unless you knew the songs specifically by the solos they had. And even then... It still comes as a surprise because there's always a bit of... I can't even think of the word. <laughs> it's not always the same every time. Well, dynamic. Yeah. That's why I like live shows, because every time you see something, it won't be the same as the night before. Mm. I mean, um, whilst I have seen him, in both our cases, we've seen him live before, but there were songs we didn't know. Which I feel 
was one of the best things mm. because yes there were all the standards that as a great fan you're looking forward to but it's nice to hear things and you're saying oh I've not heard that before I have to find out more about that yeah um Uh, yeah, uh, with the tubes, I, I've never heard of them before this show, so, and I probably won't check them out afterwards. Uh, oh, I, I think it's worth giving them a try, because I don't know how long the tubes have been around, but they might have something to offer in the future. Mm. Everybody's got to start somewhere. Although, supposedly, they've released five albums, so... Mm -hmm. Five albums in, and... Yeah. Although, a lot of people did seem to like them, so... It's just, we... Something we didn't groove to. Yeah. But then that's music, individual tastes. Yeah. Um, the next band, both of us got far more into, uh, The Mission, who... Initially, I thought I'd never heard of them before, until it got to one particular song, and then I had a, oh, <laughs> it's it this is. band, <laughs> uh, the song in question being Wasteland. I know for a fact that I've listened to that a lot of times and really enjoyed it, and it's sort of like, oh, they're the ones that did this song. Um, if you don't know the mission, you will know some of the associated acts like Pulp, uh, Sisters of Mercy, The Cult, um, Dead or Alive. It's it's kind of it's not really a super group so much as everyone is an established act. Yeah, they've all come in and joined from other places, but that's the same with bands through the years mm -hmm. you'll say oh so and so was in that before like rock family tree yeah they call it um but yeah i they're a goth rock band and i do like a fair amount of goth rock um you could definitely tell that um at least a couple of the members were originally in sisters of mercy there was a very Sisters of Mercy sound to them. Um, you quite enjoyed them. I did. I, I mean, I'd heard, heard of the mission, but uh, like you, didn't really know much about them, so it's always good to discover new pieces of music. Mm. You're definitely going to be checking them out, and they really felt much more natural and... They felt much more comfortable with their music. Yeah, but they've been around over 30 years, so... <laughs> even <laughs> it so... It would be a shame if they weren't. Even so, you hear some bands that have been around for a long time, and they don't sound quite at peace with their music. Well, let's face it, there's a lot of people around at the moment that you think... How is this your day job? Yeah. <laughs> Actually, going back to the tubes for a moment, um, that was one thing that kind of jarred with me. I wasn't a fan of the singer. His voice sounded a bit... I don't think he knew where he... It seems like he's trying to find his own style. Mm. That's what I think is the problem, because sometimes... You... I felt myself remembering Peter Gabriel from early Genesis days, and then the next thing, he's doing a bit like Alice. Mm. And you're thinking, well, where are you going? Yeah. Um, I mean, sometimes his voice sounded a bit Grover-ish. <laughs> Well, it could be worse, it could be Kermit. <laughs> well, to be fair, that was Jim Henson's real voice. Yeah, God. But anyway, <coughs> enough allusions to Sesame Street. <laughs> um, yeah. 
I'm just thinking. Somebody's having a brain fart next yeah. to me. <laughs> um, but yeah, the mission. I, at first, I was a bit worried because I, my brain made immediate connections with that name to sort of Christian rock, you know, going on missions, all that yeah. sort of thing. <laughs> I, I remember you saying, oh my God, we're going to have some Christian rock. <laughs> and I just thought, no, Alice would not have Christian rock as his support band. Well, you never know. <laughs> I, mean, I mean, he may be quirky and it was him that introduced me to Bette Midler. <laughs> <laughs> that was one of those... <laughs> One of these things is not <laughs> like the other. Oh, I remembered it. I don't know if it was the NME or Melody Maker. And he was being interviewed and he'd gone to see Bette Midler. And he was saying how she was so brilliant and what have you that he hadn't even drunk any of his beer and he had a load next to his chair. And I thought, I've just got to look her up. So that's how I found out about that. <laughs> so you heard it here first. Alice Cooper is a Bette Midler fan. <laughs> <laughs> well, you didn't necessarily hear it for, here first, but modern generations will have heard it here first. Yes. I mean, the NME and the Melody Maker were not the crap they are now really is melody maker even still a thing i don't know i know my friend used to buy both of them and everybody would avidly read them and be totally wrapped up in it, it was mm. a thing that we looked forward to at the end of the week mm. i i don't i've not seen melody maker anywhere but that could just be the well the way that the paper was going, that's no no bad thing, mm -hmm. really. Fair enough. <laughs> going all mainstream. Yeah. Uh, yeah, um, but yeah, I, I think it does help that both of us are a bit more inclined to goth rock and all that sort of yes. thing. That's probably why we enjoyed it more. Yeah. Although... I have to say, it felt more in keeping with what was appropriate to Alice. Well, that's it. I mean, let's face it, the support is a warm-up to get you in the mood. Yeah. And uh, really, everybody's there for the main act. Mm. So they should judge who should be um, supporting them because mm. people like a certain type of music. Mm. For all that, I thought it was a brilliant evening and it should have gone all night. <laughs> <laughs> well, you would say that. <laughs> to be fair, he does have enough music that he probably could manage that. Oh, definitely. In fact, he'd probably be able to manage sort of like a week-long marathon <laughs> of gigs. Mind you, I don't think I could jump and dance for another two hours. Yeah. <coughs> and yeah. the, the coughing is from the yelling last night. Yeah. I was actually th think, standing there thinking, because everyone was standing when Alice got on stage. It was one of those things of there was not a person it, still in their seat by that point. And um, I was just... I was standing there thinking, which one of us is in their 20s? <laughs> and the people next to us, well, I think they were nearing their hundreds. I looked at them for the whole two hours. They just stood there, beer in one hand, arm across like that. They did not move. And I thought, and you know who you are. Why did you buy tickets? There are people out there that were trying to buy tickets and couldn't because of arseholes like you. Mm. And, you know, it just really annoyed me. Not, didn't even move the muscle. So, 
mind you, she'd probably be moaning and say, you know that woman next to me, she danced all the time and I nearly spilt my beer. <laughs> so, change another change up from normal, this time round it's my mum doing the ranting instead of me. <laughs> now you know where he gets it from. <laughs> Yeah. That's a mild rant. When I was thinking about it, it was going to be worse, but I thought I'd get my legs slapped, so I didn't go with it. I, I think after the last few reviews that I've done, I, I'd be a bit... It would be a bit out of sorts for me to tell someone else off for ranting. <laughs> well, you said to be, you know, free form. <laughs> Yeah, anyway. Um, and I'm very good at tangenting. Yeah, that's... <laughs> um, but yeah, it was a... Now, you were a bit concerned about um, memories being... Yeah, before we went there, I said, you know, I'm, I was suddenly feeling nervous because I've got fantastic memories of the last time I saw him from coming out in the four poster bed and all the ghouls chasing all over the place. You know, I've got all these brilliant memories and I was thinking, oh my God, should I have really come? Because you should never really go back. But I'm glad I ignored that side of myself because, well, it was... Oh, words don't describe how wonderful it was. And I was amazed. There were people of old age, all ages. I saw a granddad bringing his granddaughter with him. And it was just brilliant from that side as well. Mm. Uh, I think, well, that's the thing about Alice Cooper's mu music. It's very timeless. Yeah. And it's kind of designed to be what stays with you. Yeah, and let's face it, we know there's lots of theatrics, mm. but there's nothing that's really going to frighten the kids. Mm. It's just a magic show, a lot of it. Yeah, I mean, you've got things like... Um, well, the theatrics... You see some stage shows and you think, well, the theatrics are kind of overshadowing the music. Whereas with Alice, his theatrics emphasise the music. Yeah. So you've got things like Cold Ethel, where he's got this... Ragdoll? I, I wasn't sure whether it was a ragdoll or sort of a mannequin. It, it's something like that. It's Well, it was floppy, so yeah. I think ragdoll is probably nearer to the... Yeah, it's sort of a, a life-size ragdoll that it just flops around and sort of dances with. and <laughs> It's very... <coughs> it's very effective to sort of emphasise the lyrics. Yeah. Um, and of course, Feed My Frankenstein, you, you've got this gigantic Frankenstein's monster. Oh, just... that was just hilarious, chasing <laughs> around. Yeah. Um, yeah. So you've got it um, chasing around Nita Strauss, who's the lead guitarist. Uh, and she was absolutely excellent. Yeah, I mean... Um, she's been touring with them since 2014. Oh, right. Um, well, she definitely fits in. I was blown away by her guitar work. It was mm. just... Wow, you know... She had a long piece, which again fitted in because, let's face it, everybody knows why there's being a long guitar solo. Yeah. <laughs> and at one point, a long drum solo. Yeah. Oh, the two drummers and eight guitarists at one point. Yeah. Greedy, but it worked. Yeah. Well, th that's another thing. You find in some cases when you've got all that going on, becomes a bit of a mess but it's clear that they 
really they must have been rehearsing like mad to get everything down yeah. perfectly because there was all harmonizing and nothing really well, as far as I can tell nothing went wrong yeah Alice still had his head at the end of it so <laughs> what more can you on yeah um, yeah it, if you're not aware I, I'm not sure how you could be unaware at this point but if you're not um, at the climax of every show Alice is executed um, both times I've seen him it's been a guillotine I don't know what it what was the case for you I'm ashamed to say I can't remember I've been trying to rack my brains I don't think it was a guillotine but could have yeah. been electric chair may have been I'll have to ask uh, Tina and Kim and see what they have to say. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's... Um, the whole reason behind the execution is he frames himself as the villain. And in his mind, the villain should be killed at the end of the movie. That's what his shows are. They are a horror movie. A very, you know... 1950s style horror movie, yeah. B-movie horror. On that aside, I saw the Rocky Horror Show a couple of weeks after I saw Alice. So, <laughs> my brain is probably a bit befuddled. <laughs> I mean, well, it's all... It, they're all taking from the same source material. Yeah, yeah it's, it's still making fun of everything. Yeah, and... Um, well, not so much making fun as a pastiche. Oh, yeah, okay. Oh, we're, we're going posh now, a pastiche. Well, there's a difference between a pastiche and a parody. Parody is poking fun at it. Pastiche is having fun with it. Yeah, yeah, that's very true. Definitely having fun with it. Yeah, and when it comes to the encore, um, it... There's an important thing about the encore, which gets to it in a moment, but with Alice's encores, I always regard them as sort of... Um, I would say a show in themselves. Well, they're a show in themselves, and they're also... the re His way of going to the encore is like a 1950s, 1960s B-movie horror where it's the villain returning yeah. for the next movie or <laughs> the final chuckle at the end, something like that. That's how I regard his doing his encores. That's, that's why I'm able to go, okay, yes, he's been deaded, but he's able to come back. Yeah, whether it's uh, Ming the Merciless picking up the ring at the end of Flash Gordon mm. or sitting someone sitting on the back of a coach as it drives off mm. they're all little vehicles you think oh he hasn't really gone mm. um, uh, um, uh, just thinking through because there were songs that I have seen performed like before and I'm sure the same for you Definitely. Yeah. But in amongst those were plenty of songs that I haven't seen performed live. Uh, like, I have to check the set list. Um, I, Lost in America. I've not heard that, not seen it performed live, any of that. Yeah. I, I mean, there were definitely songs I'd never heard before. Mm. And as saying earlier, got to investigate them. They're mm. probably, some may be from the new album, I'm not sure. I wouldn't like to say I haven't listened to the new album because... That's what happens. You give somebody a birthday present, what a waste of time. How <laughs> many CDs have I got? You've seen the piles. Doesn't matter, you didn't appreciate your mother's birthday present. It's just not good enough. Yeah. I'll be getting this in the next two hours, won't I? No, 
I mean, I play Sally can't dance all the time, <laughs> don't I? <laughs> For those that don't know, it's by Lou Reed. <laughs> Another person that anybody that hasn't should really look at. Shame they can't see him live anymore. No. I have. <laughs> <laughs> Show off. <laughs> That's the beauty of being the age I am. Um, I'm just thinking... There's only really um one. There you see, he should have done his research before he started. It's all very well looking down at a laptop at his knee. It's not good enough really, is it? How many songs are on the set list? <laughs> Beside the point. <laughs> uh, practically three songs and five of those were in the encore. Yeah. Um, there's only, in the main set, there was only like four songs that I'd seen performed live before. Mm -hmm. So, out of 18 songs, 14 I'd never heard performed. That is good. And that's why he's been here for all the years he has been, mm. and um, other people fall behind the wayside. Yeah, because... All, it always feels like there's a slight reinvention of his character. Yeah. It never feels like he's sticking to one style or one theme. Yeah. I, I mean, I cannot believe that, especially after continuous gigging for a week, they still had, you know, it still seemed fresh and new. Mm. And I don't think that was because I hadn't seen them for a long time. I think that is just how they perform, and that's how it comes across. Yeah. Um, I think it also helps. What keeps it fresh is there seems to be a bit of a revolving door policy in terms of uh, band lineup. Yeah, I mean, of course, this time it was different, but... Uh, since then, of course, he's had a different lineup for God knows. Uh, I was looking at the various lineups, and the I I wouldn't be surprised if the number of people he's performed with is in the hundreds. Hmm. Well, I mean, let's face it. I'm sure he was around before he became Alice, mm. so you've got to take all that into consideration as well. Oh, what was her name before the band was called Alice Cooper? I don't know. Because yeah. they did have a name, I did see the name before we no. started. It's one of those cases of you, you briefly see it and... <laughs> It's sort of like it's not really pertinent to the conversation, but um, uh, go. I suppose we should discuss the matter of the encore because that was a big factor. Um, the encore wasn't just an encore of the band coming back on and all that. The encore was the original lineup. Yeah, which was, to be honest, one of my other main reasons for wanting to see it because, of course, it was the line-up that I saw mm. and, um, I suppose, grew up with. Yeah. Um, I mean, obviously, one of the members, unfortunately, is no longer with us, so it was most of the original yeah. line-up. Um, I think he died of pneumonia or something like that. I don't know, but I'm glad that at the end of it, the whole set, they did say, oh, this is for you. Mm -hmm. And so he was recognised at the end of it. Yeah. I mean, that was good. But, because um, they started off before they all got on, the, um, like the cover of Billion Dollar Babies, the sign came up behind them and then they all entered in 
and well, no more Mr. Nice Guy. Mm. <laughs> I think we even harmonised at one point. <laughs> Possibly. <laughs> uh, I mean, you say about um, billion dollar babies being the one that gets you. F well, it's it's that guitar riff at the beginning. The moment that plays, my hair stands on it and it's just so sexy and it's just got everything for me. I just think it's brilliant and uh, that's what I'm going, when I go, that's the music you'll be carrying me down to. <laughs> I thought it'd be good night ladies. Mm. Oh, that'd probably be on the way out. Uh -huh. <laughs> <laughs> Not going to be able to listen to either of those anymore. <laughs> just, it's like you with um, Lord of the Dance. Yeah, but that's different, <laughs> isn't it? How do you mean? Well, I mean, I chose them for, for both mum and dad's funerals, so that I brought that on myself. <laughs> <laughs> well, to be fair... Um, Grandad chose March of the Gladiators. Yes. Or Enter. <laughs> Enter. Whatever. Yeah, it's March of the Toreador. Yeah. My grandfather, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen. <laughs> Just as bizarre as the rest of the family. Yeah, he, he gets carried into into the gladiators, the did 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 and then gets carried out to March of the Toreadors. <laughs> Otherwise known as it was to him, Toreador, don't spit across the floor. <laughs> so now you know where I really do get it from. <laughs> anyway, back to this. <laughs> back to this, this is what we're talking about. Uh, but, I mean, No More Mr. Nice Guy is a real big grab for me, again, yeah. because of that riff. Yeah. Um, it, it's just, I think it's because it does sound very, sort of, it kind of, if you'd like, the music is onomatopoeic. Yeah, I guess so, because it starts off all... You know, light and and as it carries on, it gets angrier. Mm. Mm. Well, it's you can't say if somebody were to say to me, "What was the best bit?" <laughs> no way can there be a, a, an honest answer to that because it was all my favourite bit. Yeah, <laughs> I mean that's the thing. This is the reason why. Um, Alice Cooper, it's very difficult to, it, you know, comparing it to other gigs I've been to, yeah. it's very difficult to say, say about there being better gigs, because he's such a showman. Yeah, and you can, if you go to see different gigs, the music's very different, and... Just like with what's your favourite film, you can't say because there's so many different routes of music, styles of music. So you might think, oh, this is really brilliant. I loved Alice Cooper. See Traffic, which is just the guy sitting down and playing his piano and what have you. And that's still brilliant. Totally different way, but they're both still brilliant. And similar with when I saw Tori Amos, that's just her, well, um, she had this setup of a uh, traditional classical piano and a sort of synthesizer keyboard oh, right. kind of doohickey. That's the only, that's the only way I can describe it because it wasn't quite a keyboard, it was all lots of different things yeah. in this one strange structure. Yeah, all bolted together. Yeah, pretty much. <laughs> and um, she'd sort of alternate between playing one and the other. Sometimes um, 
playing bits of the melody of of the songs on one piano, changing over to the other for different effects. Yeah. It, so you've got that, and whilst there's not much sort of going on stage show wise, it's very dynamic in what she's doing with her voice, how she's playing the piano, all that sort of thing. Um, with her, it's a lot of atmosphere and all that sort of thing. So that's why it's very difficult to rank shows, but with Alice Cooper, it's kind of a, because of his showmanship, because of everything that he puts into it, you know, there's all this energy and um, always bringing his A game. Yeah, and even when it's uh, something like Only Women That Bleed, that was sitting down and it was a fairly quiet song, but appropriate for the stage that we were in. Yeah. It was just a nice progression. Mm. And that's, that's where, where we're coming from with the tubes, because Alice's progression is very... You can see that there's a lot of thought put into how all of it progresses. Yeah. And having something like, as I say, Only Women Bleed, uh, it's not all full on. You do have, a, if not quite a respite, but you just can't carry on at that speed. Mm. It's that um, it can't all be at 11. No. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Sometimes you've got to take it down a few notches so that um, when you do go back up, it it still has an impact. Yeah. It, it's... it's kind of like the best way thing I can equate it to is um, like how certain plays um, you'll have a really heavy dramatic scene. Yeah. Like in Macbeth, you've got the murder of King Duncan, and then. Right after that, you've got this comedy scene with the jester. Yeah. And it, it of uh, that sort of bringing the tone down a bit, just yeah. to give the audience a bit of a. <sighs> <laughs> Let me get over that. <laughs> yeah. Um. When it came to the encore, I think. I don't know about you, but it kind of felt best that the encore was with the was what was with the original lineup. I think, well, it couldn't have been any other way, really. Mm. And I do feel more than it was more, if you like, a mini set yeah. than an encore. Yeah, definitely, because normally encores are like three short songs, something like that, whereas these were five. Fairly long songs. Oh, God, yeah. I mean, Billion Dollar Babies is not a short song. Well, most of the, the ones that they sang weren't, billion, you know, they were not short songs. I mean, School's Out was probably the shortest, and that went on for yeah. longer than it normally does. Yeah, but uh, I think what was clever what they did, um, halfway through School's Out they changed into another brick in the wall. Part two. <laughs> Just for those pedants out there, because I know for a fact if I didn't specify part two, there would be people commenting going, which part? Oh. Because... I didn't even know. <laughs> yeah. I, I only know because of other covers I've heard. Uh-huh. But yeah, that the bit that everyone knows is another brick in the wall part two, because Pink Floyd are a bunch of pretentious. Yeah, but I'm not going to rant about Pink Floyd. That can be for another review. Yeah. Well, suffice to say, I like the early stuff. Mm. I think Medal was one of my favourite albums where Pink Floyd were concerned. 
Well, I only really get along with the really weird stuff like Hamagama, so... Yeah. <laughs> anyway, the way they blended it, you know, going straight into Hey Teacher, Leave, leave That Kid Alone, it was all like, huh? <laughs> yeah, it's, it's one of those, okay. I mean, every cover I've heard of that song is better than the original, so... <laughs> But, um, the thing is, it felt like School's Out. Yeah. It didn't feel like another brick in the wall. It felt like a lyrical progression in School's Out. Well, that's it, because everybody just carried on singing yeah. on without missing a beat, really. Yeah. We all knew how it was progressing, but sort of like, okay. <laughs> Let's go along with it. Yeah. Um, and it's not like it felt like a medley or anything like that. Oh no, I hate medleys with a passion. <laughs> I mean, the easiest way to describe it is it felt like a mashup. Oh no, I, I just think it was very, not even a mashup, it was just very cleverly sliced into the middle of schools out. So integration? I, I don't know if there's a technical term. But... <laughs> yeah. Or infiltration. <laughs> mm, not really, because if it was an infiltration, we would have had David Gilmore come on stage or something. Oh, God, perish the thought. <laughs> <laughs> That would have been weird. <laughs> um, but yeah, it's uh, rather annoyingly, because um, I was taking photos all throughout the show, and um, rather annoyingly, it ran out of power before I was able to take a photo during school's out, and that's that's when they had both lineups, because there was a different lineup for the main set and a different lot. And the original lineup for the encore, they had both lineups on the stage, and it was sort of like you had both drummers, you had all the guitarists and bassists, and it was it, it was just unbelievable. Yeah, and then right at the end, you had sort of all this pyrotechnics and streamers going out. <laughs> And all that sort of thing. And oh. don't forget the giant uh, balloons. Oh, yeah. <laughs> they had these giant balloons that were um, uh, sort of thrown out to the crowd. And when they'd get near Alice, he'd slice through them with his... Is it a rapier? Something like that? I think I think it possibly is. It could have been just a cane. It's hard to say. No, it, it was a sword of some description. Because yeah. he's got a cane and a sword. Anyone who wishes to dress up as Alice Cooper, you've got to have both. That's true, if you to do it properly. Yeah. I mean, there's so, it's one of those things of, whilst there are so many different costumes he has, you've got to have the cane. Yeah. Cane, top hat, leather jacket. Yeah. I did see a lady dressed up as a nurse. Yeah. <laughs> um... Not really much more to detail. I mean, we're already retreading old grounds. Well, that's it. I mean, we've said what made up the end of the concert and gets a bit tedious. Yeah. I mean, the opening track, which was Brutal Planet, I, I know that song really well. Um, it's one of my favourites of newer Alice stuff. Mm -hmm. Um, but that was not what I was expecting as an opening. I wasn't sure what to expect. It, I think it do, it definitely works as an opening. It's, yeah. it's got a very marching beat that kind of helps to drive it forward. Um, yeah, I, I can't... Welcome to my nightmare, I 
or Black Widow are a couple of others that I probably have expected as openers. Yeah. But Brutal Planet is perfectly fine as an opener. Yeah. Um, yeah, you probably need to sort of go through the music that I've got because there's yeah. a lot of Alice that you haven't heard. I'm sure there is. I have to raid your collection. Yeah. You know the one thing that really pissed me off, and it's obviously a new thing, mm. is people coming in throughout the concert, you know. Yeah. Come, you know, I found it really disturbing because I'm not used to that. Mm. And uh, I think, why? why? Why aren't you here to hear the, you know, the support? You know, why are you coming in and going out? And what really weirded me out is people going for a pee in the middle of Alice's set. Yeah. I'm thinking, what the? I mean, you made a point of not <laughs> really getting to. <laughs> yeah. I rushed, I thought, I'm not going to go out just before the, um, before we were so rudely interrupted. Yeah, battery decided to run out of power. Fortunately, this time around, I had sense to actually charge a spare. <laughs> um, well, this time around, I actually had spares to charge. <laughs> had to happen sooner or later. Yeah. I'm actually getting organised. Whatever, not, uh, whatever next. <laughs> <coughs> um, but yeah, the whole coming in, I mean, I can understand not being there for certain band sets, like, uh, you know, just completely missing out a band set yeah. and then coming in during the interval, but actually coming in and going out during band yeah. sets, it... I suppose because... I'm more used to be going to the theatre and if you arrive late they won't let you in mm. and uh, you know on one occasion as I told you the usher wouldn't let us in and then when we were allowed the guy on stage goes and lo the late arrivals <laughs> <laughs> and you know but uh, obviously not having been all oh, to a gig for uh, the bands I have seen have been at pubs mm -hmm. so I'm not used to this but obviously it's what happens these days and things change mm. I mean I don't get it but maybe that's all because I'm very frequently trying to get to the front so I'm sort of like no not moving <laughs> <laughs> once you're at the front why would you move yeah it's like when I've been at festivals and sort of getting to the front, it's sort of like once you're at the front, you're there for the day because <laughs> you're not getting that space again. No. Take no prisoners. Yeah. I mean, this is why I've become disturbingly adept at staving off any sort of needs. <laughs> yeah. You know, I'm hungry, doesn't matter, I'm at the front. I need to pee, doesn't matter, I'm at the front. My brain is melting, doesn't matter, I'm at the front. <laughs> Actually, that's fairly close to one year where it's sort of, well, the year that Alice was performing, um, there were, it, it was one of those ridiculously hot summers where the sun is beating down sunburnt arms and slight sunburn on the face and there was pyrotechnics right at, and you're right at the front and it's sort of like ah my pyrotechnic <laughs> my eyebrows <laughs> I mean um my mate Callum um he ended up with the arm hairs had burnt off oh because my God. The... <laughs> That's how, that's how bad it was. So that's one hairy person. <laughs> I think mine had burnt off slightly as well. And I'm not exactly, I mean, you won't be able to see, well, you might be able to see, but you probably just see another sleeve. Yeah. 
<laughs> you don't want to see anyway, trust me. <laughs> oh, oh yeah, the other one. A message to Wembley. I haven't been there since I saw Led Zepp, the original group, and they still haven't put the locks on the ladies loose. About time they did so, I think. How long ago was that? Um, oh, over 40 years, definitely. And um, it might be different toilets, but the doors still don't manage to have locks. How do you even have toilets without locks? Well, you're just grateful you got long hands. <laughs> Yeah. Anyway. <laughs> um, oh, also personal complaint. Uh, Wembley, can you sort out the draft? <laughs> Seriously, <laughs> wherever, wherever I've been sitting, there's always been this massive draft and it's sort of like, OK, I'm not going to be taking off any of my layers because I'm bloody freezing. Mind you, the guy in the mission was saying how cold he was. Yeah. <laughs> So, what chance do we stand? Yeah. Well, that, that's the thing, it's sort of like, well, if the people on stage are cold, and going by other sets that I've been to, I know, I know from what they say, it gets bloody hot up there. Mm. If the performers are cold, we're freezing. <laughs> Um, I mean, where we were sat, I kept feeling this draft. I mean, you possibly blocked by me. Yeah. Um, but none the more for that. Um, that's not really, that's an irrelevance, I would say. Uh, that's just niggling. That's nitpicks. Yeah. At the end of the day, it was a very enjoyable night and hope to see him... But hopefully he doesn't retire at 70, like he said he would have to if the Rolling Stones did. Yeah, I never thought I'd say this, but I hope the Rolling Stones don't <laughs> <can> retire. <laughs> um, but yeah, um, if you get everyone, if he's in your area, go see him. You won't regret it. Now, it's a damn good night out. Um, and dare I say, not expensive. How much, As gigs go. How much was it? I think it was f around 50 quid. Which, you know, in the grand scheme of things, that's not bad. I'm just thinking, because Metallica was 45. And that was a while back. That was 2008. Yeah. So we're talking almost 10 years ago. And that was only five quid cheaper. That was for four bands. Oh. Um, and one of them was a last minute change from what was originally on the bill. Yeah. Because um, I think the lead singer was ill. Uh, he was either ill or, well, he was either ill in terms of... Um, he couldn't sing type of yeah. ill or he was or he might have broken his leg or something so <laughs> that might curtail things somewhat and, and not and um not in a sort of like dave grohl he, he broke his leg and continued performing but i think he was he broke his leg on stage <laughs> so it's sort of like ah. Uh, Okay, make the best of it. <laughs> There's not much you can do when it's at the time. Yeah. Uh, I think it's sort of like, you, there's not much you can do when you're not at the gig and you've broken your leg. Or, he, I know he was ill in some capacity and so they had to have a last minute change. Yeah. Um, but anyway, uh, I'm just thinking... Um, Yeah, Wembley Arena, I think 
is a bit more expensive than Wembley Stadium, possibly. I wouldn't know. I mean, again, too many years. Yeah. But, I mean, for three bands, and you're talking original lineup. Yeah. And it's not like we're dealing with a small name here. Exactly. I mean, even people that aren't interested in music yeah. know of him. Yeah. I mean, was that 50 quid per ticket? Or... Yeah. Right. <laughs> I wish it was. <laughs> but, I mean, that's still a darn sight cheaper than the tickets for um, O2 Arena were going for, for Metallica. I, I basically looked at those prices and it's sort of like, ah, no. <laughs> You're kidding me. <laughs> I think it was sort of like the cheapest ones were like 95. Oh, no. It's very nice if you can. I mean, bearing in mind, that's the cheapest tickets. That's more than I paid for the VIP to see Devin Townsend. Yeah, well, that, that's it. I mean, we're, considering that that was a meet and greet. Yeah. I, I mean, I think we had good seats last night. Yeah. Not the best in the house, obviously. But... Well, considering the likelihood of the clamour yeah. for the tickets there must have been, I think we were probably f quite lucky with the tickets we got. Yeah. Well, it's only because your brother contacted me and said, oh, he's performing. Yeah. That was it, boom, boom, boom. <laughs> yeah. Was, I mean, I can't imagine if we'd been any later. No, I think if I'd left it to the afternoon. Mm. I mean, that's the thing. When you put out an announcement, like, with the original line-up, that's going to pull everyone that... I mean, we're talking a Thursday night and it was a packed house. Yeah. That's... That's the sort of draw that original line-up Alice Cooper band gets. Yeah. I mean, I really... I think I, what surprised me most was... You know, I suppose it shouldn't really, the age of the audience. Well, I mean... It was obviously aging from original fans to new fans. I mean, let's face it. Um, you would have been sort of 10 when he, when he started out. Yeah, something like that. Thank you so much for that. <laughs> Everybody gets out their calculators. <laughs> uh, well, if I'm still doing this in 50 years, <laughs> or 40, yeah, 40, no, 30 years even. I suddenly added... <laughs> Oh dear, poor old... <coughs> I don't even smoke. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, if I'm still doing this in 30 years, I'll be bemoaning my age. <laughs> Possibly to my children. Mm. Um, anyway... <laughs> I think we've come to a natural conclusion. Yeah. Um, all I, only really real things I've got left to say are n not sure about plans for the future uh, reviews, possibly going to be covering Anti Flag, their new album, um, also going to be finishing, attempting to finish up the Clusterfuck reviews and trying to get some more up-to-date reviews because those are ones covering August, September and October because we really fell by the wayside there but none the more for that uh, whatever will be next you will see it in feeds and all that sort of thing um, basically you've got to get a grip of your knickers and get on with it 
it's not a matter of that, it's being, it's um, the people I'll be doing the reviews with. Pinning them down. Yeah, well, it's not so much pinning them down as them having the time to be able to do the yeah. thing. So it's sort of... Because um, one of them is still in college, mm -hmm. so... And they're dealing with um, sort of exams and everything. And the other is in full-time work. Yeah. Well, two of them are in full-time work that... That's including Pierce. Yeah. So it's being able to grab them when they're available. But none the more for that. This will be going up fairly immediately because it doesn't take much to edit things together here. No. I mean, especially seeing as I know what the opening and cl that's what takes the longest time, knowing, figuring out what will open and close the reviews. <laughs> <laughs> but seeing as I'm, I'm able to do specific shots as the opening shots and closing shots and things like that, yeah. it's not going to be difficult. Um, but anyway, um, that's it for this episode. It's goodbye from me. And it's goodbye from him. <laughs>